In the beginning of Lent, the Orthodox Church says the prayer of St. Ephraim. O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, despair, lust of power, and idle talk. But give rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to thy servant. Yea, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own transgressions, and not to judge my brother. For blessed art thou unto ages of ages. Amen. St. Ephraim the Syrian, a teacher of repentance, was born at the beginning of the fourth century in the city of Nisibis in Mesopotamia, into a family of impoverished toilers of the soil. His parents raised their son in piety, but from his early childhood he was known for his quick temper and impetuous character. He often had fights, acted thoughtlessly, and even doubted God's providence. He finally recovered his senses by the grace of God and embarked on the path of repentance and salvation. Once he was unjustly accused of stealing a sheep and was thrown into prison. He heard a voice in a dream calling him to repent and correct his life. After this he was acquitted of the charges and set free. The young man ran off to the mountains to join the hermits. This form of Christian asceticism had been introduced by a disciple of St. Anthony the Great, the Egyptian desert dweller Eugenius. St. James of Nisibis, commemorated on January 13th, was a noted ascetic, a preacher of Christianity, and a denouncer of the Arians. St. Ephraim became one of his disciples. Under the direction of the Holy Hierarch, St. Ephraim attained Christian meekness, humility, submission to God's will, and the strength to undergo various temptations without complaint. His teacher, St. James, transformed the wayward youth into a humble and contrite monk. Realizing the great worth of his disciple, he made use of his talents. He trusted him to preach sermons, to instruct children in school, and he took Ephraim with him to the first ecumenical council in Nicaea in 325. St. Ephraim was obedient to St. James for 14 years until the bishop's death in 338. After the capture of Nisibis by the Persians in 363, St. Ephraim went to a monastery near the city of Edessa. Here he saw many great ascetics passing their lives in prayer and psalmody and living in solitary caves. He became especially close to the ascetic Julian, commemorated October 18th, who was of one mind with him. St. Ephraim combined asceticism with ceaseless study of the Word of God, taking from it both solace and wisdom for his soul. The Lord gave him a gift of teaching, and people began to come to him, waiting to hear his counsel, which produced compunction in the soul since he began with self-accusation. Both verbally and in writing, St. Ephraim instructed everyone in repentance, faith, and piety, and he denounced the Arian heresy, which at that time was causing great turmoil. Pagans who heard the preaching of the saint were converted to Christianity. He also wrote the first Syriac commentary on the Pentateuch, that is, the five books of Moses. He wrote many prayers and hymns, thereby enriching the church's liturgical services. Famous prayers of St. Ephraim are to the Most Holy Trinity, to the Son of God, and to the Most Holy Theotokos. He also composed hymns for the Nativity of Christ, the Baptism, the Resurrection, and funeral hymns. St. Ephraim's Prayer of Repentance, O Lord and Master of my life, is recited during Great Lent, and it summons Christians to spiritual renewal. From ancient times, the Church has valued the works of St. Ephraim. Among the prophets, King David is the preeminent psalmist, and among the fathers of the Church, St. Ephraim is the preeminent man of prayer. His spiritual experience made him a guide for monastics and a help to the pastors of Edessa. St. Ephraim wrote in Syriac, but his works were very early translated into Greek and Armenian. Translations into Latin and Slavonic were made from the Greek text. In many of St. Ephraim's works, we catch glimpses of the life of the Syrian ascetics, which was centered on prayer and working in various obediences for the common good of the brethren. The outlook of all the Syrian ascetics was the same. The monks believed that the goal of their efforts was communion with God and the acquisition of divine grace. For them, the present life was a time of tears, fasting, and toil. He said, If the Son of God is within you, then his kingdom is also within you. Thus the kingdom of God is within you, a sinner. Enter into yourself, search diligently, and without toil you shall find it. Outside of you is death, and the door to it is sin. Enter into yourself, dwell within your heart, for God is there. St. Ephraim, accounting himself as the least and worst of all, 
went to Egypt at the end of his life to see the efforts of the great ascetics. He was accepted there as a welcomed guest and received great solace from conversing with them. On his return journey, he visited Caesarea in Cappadocia with St. Basil the Great, who wanted to ordain him a priest, but he considered himself unworthy of the priesthood. At the insistence of St. Basil, he consented only to be ordained as a deacon, in which rank he remained until his death. Later on, St. Basil invited St. Ephraim to accept a bishop's throne, but the saint feigned madness in order to avoid this honor, humbly regarding himself as unworthy of it. After his return to his own Edessa wilderness, St. Ephraim hoped to spend the rest of his life in solitude, but divine providence again summoned him to serve his neighbor. The inhabitants of Edessa were suffering from a devastating famine. By the influence of his word, the saint persuaded the wealthy to render aid to those in need. From the offerings of believers, he built a poorhouse for the poor and sick. St. Ephraim then withdrew to a cave near Edessa, where he remained till his death in the year 373.